Sim cookies. Sim cookies were uh, invented by either one of two people who both to this day hate each other because they think the other person stole their idea. Um, Sim cookies are a way of trying to fight the, um, the sin flood attack. Remember, the so sin flood sends a sin from the attacker to the victim, and the victim allocates a queue entry in his sin queue, and then the uh, attacker doesn't ever rep respond. Oftentimes, the attacker is spoofing his source IP, so it doesn't even see the sin act coming back. That goes to whatever the spoofed IP address was. So the attacker's saying, hi, I'm 128.138.42.7. Here's a sin. The victim puts that in his queue. And then the attacker says, hi, I'm 63.47.92.4. Here's a sin. And then the victim puts that away. And pretty soon, the victim is filling up his entire half-open connection queue list with people who will never respond. OK? So that's it's not a bandwidth saturation. It's a resource saturation. It's taking away slots in the queue. Now, normally, when the victim receives a SIN, he records the source IP and port of the person requesting the connection and um, server IP port, sequence number of the client. So when there's a SIN, there's also a sequence number if you've, you've looked at TCP IP packets. Um, there's a sequence number, which is supposed to be random. And whatever sequence number he generates, they each have independent sequence numbers that increment depending on whenever they reply. Sequence number of the server is also stored. So those things are stored in this queue, in this list. So the idea is to not store anything on the server side, the victim. All right. So I'm the server. You send me a sin. I normally would write everything down about you and make notes about what I replied. So I'll keep track of your sequence number, your port, your IP. I'd write it into a queue. Also, I generate a sequence number, and I send a sin act back to you. My idea, the new idea of sin cookies is, I'm not going to keep track of any of this. I'm going to send you a sin act, but not re record anything. Well, this might seem to be a problem, since when you act, I have to actually know who you are and know that we're engaged in a protocol. So the idea is to encode all the information I need into the sequence number that I use to reply. That's the idea. OK? So there's an initial sequence number that the server generates called, strangely enough, the ISN. And I'm going to put all the information into the sequence number so that when you reply, I get all the context back that I need. Okay, so what happens is locally and globally for the for the server, there's a counter that increments every 64 seconds, and we call it T. It's a 32-bit counter. So that's gonna be a long time before it wraps around, right? There's four billion numbers, and only increments one once a minute. How many? How long is four billion minutes? One. A billion seconds is about 32 years. So so four billion would be like 120 years, and then these are minutes, so multiply by 60. So it's a while. Yeah, it's not going to wrap around in our lifetime. There's also a secret key, K, that's selected by the server for the life of the time that the server's up. It generates new every time, and it's secret, so attackers shouldn't know it. And then the maximum segment size, um, we'll talk about in a second, is also um, something that's usually negotiated. And that's encoded as well. And we're going to use only three bits, so we'll only have eight values that are, that are available to us. And then here is the initial sequence number that the server generates. It takes the lowest five bits of the, of the counter T as the first and most significant bits of the ISN, puts in the MSS, and then the last 24 bits are this hash of the client IP and port, server IP and port, the, t the full 32-bit time counter, and the secret key, all hashed together into 24 bits. All right, do you see how that's constructed? So that when the client 
responds, they have to include this uh, sequence number, and so they're sending back the. That's right. Uh, when the client gets this back, they'll send back the ISN plus one. In fact, let's go through it. Okay. So first of all, the maximum segment size, that MSS, that was a three-bit number that was put sort of in the middle of everything. The way uh, TCPIP works is that the maximum segment size is proposed by the client, whatever he would most like to use, and then the server computes the best value as a compromise between the two and sends it back, and that's the one they use. Okay. So normally you have a wider range of these things, but because we only have three bits to use, you're going to only have eight values that the server will, will ever choose. And the server decides depending on what the MTU is of the network and whether on the same network or different networks and so forth. It's part of the TCP IP protocol, but it's part of the initial negotiation. So that's encoded, but only up to eight values. Okay, so the server sends back this ISN um, the client replies with an ACK and will reply with the ISN plus one back to the server. Okay, now the server hasn't recorded anything, hasn't written anything down at all. So here comes a random ACK out of the blue as far as he's concerned. And he wants to make sure that this ACK is valid. So what does he do? Well, subtracts one to get back the, the ISN that he used initially. Since the ACK has a client IP import, server IP import, because it's received at certain server IP import, and a T which matches in the lowest five bits, the server knows K, so it rehashes everything and makes sure it matches. Follow? So out of the blue, you get back this ACK, and along with the ACK is going to be what port and, and IP you're receiving it at, what port and IP it's coming from, you know T, and you know um, you know K because it's part of your secret. It is your secret key that you store. So you're going to make sure that um, when you hash this, it comes back to the same hash value. Now T may have incremented a couple of times since you sent it and was received back. It happens in 64 seconds, but you're not going to allow it to increment more than like 32 times and wrap around because that's 64 t seconds times 32 is half an hour. We don't wait half an hour for an act. We made a, maybe a minute or something. All right. If you get a match, if the hash value comes out correctly to the hash received in the in the replying ISN, then you accept it and then you queue it. Now we have a, a connection, but that verifies that the person who sent you the act really exists and really is somebody who, who, to whom you sent a sin act. Not some random person who just sent an act out of the air.